Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new episode and review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content and hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, they're still sitting at this awkward dinner after Sheree dropped this bomb. So Sonya was like, I just feel like Drew's anger is misdirected. It is misdirected, it's directed, it should be at that shady assistant, he needs to go. And let me tell y'all something. I had watched the previous episode before this episode. Did y'all notice that the so-called assistant that was supposed to be suspended came out of the room and then realized the cameras were there and he was like, oh, and then he went back into the room. Drew, you got a little line problem, girl. You got a little line problem. That man ain't a bit more promote. That man ain't a bit more on probation than the man in the moon. So after that, Drew apologized for putting her hands in Sheree's face and the way she brought the information to Sheree. So Ralph is confused as to how he got in it. So Kenya is like, well, Ralph, Sheree did not say anything to anyone else like Drew did. And Sheree was like, yeah, I didn't tell nobody else like she brought it to Candy. So Drew was like, wait a minute, hold him up, swell him up. I went to Candy, but I was like, Candy, what should I do? Girl, you should have said something to Sheree. That's what you should have did, child. But... Let, Sheree, let me get on you. How did Fatum know? Huh? You didn't tell anyone who knows Drew, but you did tell someone. So y'all are both wrong. So Sheree is mad that she ran it back to Candy. And then Sheree turns and she addresses Candy. She's like, yeah, you took it to other people instead of bringing it to me. Here go, Candy. This is true. <laughs> Baby, Candy is like, listen, let me just get this out the way so you helpers can leave me alone. So then Kenya gets a text from Petty Mark, honey, because y'all know he hates to see her have a good time or even live. And she gets up to go get some air. So Marlo was like, take a deep breath. Don't even worry about him, girl, because you know he ain't nothing but the devil. And well, he definitely is giving 666. So she gets up and she walks behind Kenya to make sure that she's okay. And Kenya was like, me and Mark had a plan. He was supposed to keep Brooklyn. All of a sudden, now he got to go to work. He wants me to come over the bridge and he wants me to pick up Brooklyn and take her home. So Candy gets up because she realizes that Kenya and Marlo have walked away. And so Candy was like, what's going on? And Kenya was like, well, Mark is just being Mark. And, you know, he hasn't seen Brooklyn in this amount of time. And so Candy was like, listen, sometimes you just have to start letting him reach out. Like, you can't always be doing everything. Let him reach out. And Kenya was like, as a mother, I can't do that. It's a catch-22. I mean, you want her to have that relationship with her father, but at the same time, you cannot allow Mark to come in and out. Like, it's not gonna work like that. I had to learn that the hard way. And she said that fathers instill self-esteem in their daughters. Yes, and they can also ruin their daughter's self-esteem. Cause they looking like, well, dang, my daddy didn't love me. So how could you love me? Or they can get in a relationship with a man that's treating them like dirt. And because they feel like that's the example they have from their dad, that could also be a hindrance. So, I mean, you just kind of got to be careful. It's really no right or wrong way. It's your child. So I say do whatever you want to do, but it's just tough. So when they get back to the table, they're asking about Tyrone. Child, Tyrone ain't coming nowhere, honey. It's going to be spring, September, summer before y'all see him, okay? So Sheree was like, yeah, he had to ask for permission so that he could come. I get embarrassed every time Sheree says that. It is giving very much. I have to see if his mama going to let him come. Sheree, at our big grown ages, this just sounds downright silly, honey. It's just silly. So then Marlo pipes up, tell my candy, I need to say something to you. <laughs> Marlo, leave Candy alone. Leave Candy alone. She was like, you need to let that sex stuff go. Because that's all you do. That's basically what she was telling Candy. And Candy basically was like, honey, mind the vagina that pays you. Okay, get you some business. I know you're used to your coochie buzzing as well. So stop trying to pay attention to mine. And Marlo was like, and also, you say you got all these jobs, then you need to make Todd one of your jobs. Put on your candy coated lipstick, okay, and get to working. Do what you want to do sex-wise. But I'm going to have to agree with Marlo. The panties are out of hand, okay? I don't want no another man with a remote to my vibrating underwear. I don't want you to be able to sexually arouse me. No. 
So therefore, in thus and such, I'm going to have to go with Marlo on this one. In the next scene, it's the next day and Candy's checking in with the play and they're telling her that Atlanta and Texas are showing out. Okay, I'm glad we can help. <laughs> Candy has the Midas touch. Do y'all hear me? Everything she touches turns to gold. Baby. So on the other side, Kenya and Sonya, they're taking a stroll in New York and Sonya tells her that Ross used to play in New York for the Giants and he's a two-time Super Bowl champ. She was like, let me tell y'all something. When my man won the Super Bowl, I was so turned on. Child, I would be too, honey. He looking how he looking. Child, no disrespect. I'm just saying. Moving forward. So then they started talking about Mark's stupidity and how Kenya addressed Ralph. And she was like, I kind of feel bad that I came to Ralph like that. I feel like, you know, I really let him have it. Girl, don't feel bad because Ralph needed a good stern talking to. Okay, now I understand because that's somebody else's husband and whatnot and it's not yours. But at the same time, he'll be all right. So she said Ralph really triggered her. Charlie triggered me too. So then they switched to Drew and Sonya is saying that the thing with the assistant and Sheree and her putting her finger in Sheree's face, that just kind of threw her off. And then she brought up dropping it with Drew. And she was like, I still cannot tell you what that is. So Kenya was like, how's she gonna help other people when she had surgery? I'm gonna say this, Sonya messy. Because you were working out with her, eating those fake meal prep kits, and you didn't say nothing. If you wanted to say something, you should have said it back then. Child is giving messy boots. In the next scene, Candy gets a FaceTime from Sheree, and she's asking about Tyrone. Candy, Tyrone is not coming. She was like, yeah, um, he's not sure he can make it because it's in within a 100-mile radius, and we're really, really close, so he don't want to chance it. Y'all tell me why production showed the radius as 94.6. Show right. He can come. Okay. Got a little over five miles to spare. He can come if he wants to come. He don't want to come. That man not trying to be seen on camera with Sheree. See, this is what it was. He didn't expect them to film so close to where he was living. So he keep using that excuse. I can't come, you know, a hundred miles. I ain't going to be able to make it. Mm-hmm. He out now so he don't have time. Sheree is like, well, uh, uh, he, he wants to, uh, go to the matinee. So, uh, we'll come back, uh, talk to you soon. I can tell you lying because we are replying. Stutter, 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 stutter. Shout out to Joe. Sheree, you're lying. Okay. I can always tell when Sheree is lying because she starts with that, uh, uh, perfect example. When they were at the reunion, Andy goes, Sheree. How's Chateau Sheree coming along? There are a lot of people who are saying that it's a uh, never, never land. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's coming along and um, the contractors are, um, are working on it and um, you'll be the first person over for tea. Sheree, when is she by Sheree coming out? More lifestyle. What does that mean? Joggers. Okay, so when is it coming out? Uh, 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 spring, September, summer. This is what this is giving, Sheree. It is okay, honey. We have all played the fool. Honey, everybody plays the fool sometime. But girl, you're going to have to stop all this lying at this big grown age. This don't make no sense. Baby, she hurry up and got off that phone. She was like, let me hang candy up. Try asking me all these questions. <laughs> she was like, I got to go. In the next scene, they're at lunch and Marlo is talking about Jazzy Fizzle. And she was saying how she used to like him, but he had a girlfriend and she didn't want to be no side chick. So she was like, no. I know Candy was thinking about you're my little secret, honey, but I don't get down like that. It's not happening. So Kenya was like, okay, question. Who's the most famous person that ever hit on you? Here go Todd. All right, now don't make me go off. Oh, calm down, Todrick. So Candy said, well, me and let Gerald Levert, we were in a full-on relationship. We, I got music I haven't even released. Still at home. Oh, okay. Legs, hips, and body. That's a fun fact. <laughs> Child, let me tell y'all something. When I tell y'all, my mama used to be in love with Gerald Levert. That was a handsome man. Oh, Gerald Levert, no, he was handsome. She used to love him and she used to love Donnie Simpson from BET. Y'all remember when Donnie Simpson used to have video soul? Child, you could not tell my mama nothing. She just knew she was going to be with the men, honey. I think every woman in the 80s and the 90s loved them some Donnie Simpson and some Gerald Levert. So Drew was like, well... I dated, you know, the king of the NBA. We went on a few dates. Like I got flewed out to his games. He listened to my music before his games. Drew, 
Let me find out you talking about Derwin Ding Dong Davis. Honey, it's giving very much Drew Sedora. Y'all remember that episode when Drew was on there destroying families? Let me call girl Melanie and see if this is the truth. Because Drew, honey, it's sounding like a lie. So Kenya gonna say, y'all know she talking about Laquan. <laughs> this half was ignorant. Oh, they ignorant. So Marlo said that she went out with Gene Simmons and Todd was like, give us somebody that we really know. Everybody knows Gene Simmons from Kiss. I mean, well, if you don't know, that's the group that he was in. And Kenya said Prince. Here go Drew. I'm going to love to read Kenya's fake memoir because they're going to be a bunch of fake stories, but none of them are going to be true. Drew. See, this is why they get on you. This is exactly why they get on you. Girl, Kenya was and still is stunning. Do you know how bad Kenya was back in the day? I am most definitely almost sure that Prince did in fact hit on her. Child, she ain't say he went home with her and wrote a song about her. He just said, she just said that he hit on her. And I think that's true. Now her having sex with the lion's blood or whatever she said last episode, child. That was a lie. But I think this might be true. So then they start asking about Tyrone yet again. Of course, Sheree has no answers. He's a con artist. Moving forward. So then they get on the bus to go to the play and Candy is doing a panty check. Marlo sitting up here lying to my, oh, oh, why y'all doing mine? Girl, you know you ain't got them panties on. So Sheree, she lying as well. So I'm like, I have them on, but the remote is upstairs. Oh, don't worry. Anybody else can control them. So if you really got them on, we gonna figure it out. So then Sonya was like, mine not working. I, I just need to figure it out. So honey, she starts digging for gold right then and there. Why are you digging in your panties on the back of this bus? That is disgusting. So then after she get through digging off in her drawers, honey, didn't hit her hand with the hand sanitizer or nothing, sat right on down. And now she finna go inside this play and touch these door handles and whatnot. Lord, I ain't gonna never get out this house, child. Oh, honey. I mean, that's just nasty. Child, I know germs is everywhere, but that was just gross. So once she turns the panties around and puts them in the right place, honey, to get the motion going down below in the ocean, they're buzzing out of control. But it's not her husband. It was Ralph. That is gross, okay? That is gross. That is cringe. I would not want no other man besides my man in control of my vaginal sensations. Honey, y'all can call me what y'all want, but that ain't gonna work for me. That is not gonna work for me. And both Drew and Ross just sitting there looking. Candy, this ain't cute. Girl, this ain't cute now. So then Kenya finally gets on the bus. Kenya, okay? You're late. Be the first one fussing and you late getting on the bus. So Candy was like, you got your panties on? She was like, oh my gosh, I forgot them. <laughs> so then in the confessional, she was like, I'm not about to be walking around with no vibrating panties on around other people's men. I know that's right. And we going up in the play for the colored men and then we got to sit here with the vibrating drawers on? No, ma'am. I stand with Kenya Summer more on this one. That ain't gonna work for me either. Moving forward. So production gets on the bus and tells them it's a road closure so they have to either walk or they can spin the block one time. So Candy was like, "Just let's just walk. So Marlo decides she gonna take a bite. Try she out of control. So they finished the play and they said that it was a really powerful play. I wanna see it. Y'all know what? I hope it's still on Broadway because I really do wanna see that play. I'm gonna have to look it up. I wanna review it. I actually wanna see what all's doing. That's wonderful for Candy, though, baby. Let me tell you something about Candy. Candy gonna accomplish something if she don't do nothing else. So she tells them to go ahead and change into their PJs and they gonna hang out a little bit. So the first people downstairs are Sheree, Kenya, and Marlo. They get there first. So Kenya was like, where's Ralph from? I feel like I hear a New York accent. And so Sheree was like, I think he said he was from Jersey. So Marlo was like, oh, that relationship is weird. And Kenya was like, yeah, it is kind of weird, you know, but, and yesterday, girl, he called her a full on liar. So then they started talking about dropping it with Drew. So Sheree gonna say, she doing a workout when she just had a whole body makeover? Yeah, it ain't making no sense, child. It, it, it ain't making no sense. Kenya said it's giving Ponzi scheme. It is giving very much pyramid scheme. It, it definitely is. So Marlo tries to bring up the site, but it says something went wrong. So Kenya gonna say, maybe they only accept cash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. Oh, child, I swear. These help was crazy. And girl gone. So in the confessional, Marlo gonna say, La Archive site works. So Kenya said, listen, Kenya more hair care. The site is ready for all your hair care needs. Here comes Sheree. When um, She by Sheree launches, it will be available spring, summer, and September. No thanks, Sheree. 
No, thank you, honey. We've been waiting on that since 2008. Just sit this one out. Moving forward. So everybody's coming downstairs, child. Everybody gets there. And so when all the guys come down, Kenya decides that she wants to apologize to Ralph. And she was like, I was projecting. Kenya, girl, it's giving growth. Okay, it is giving growth. I love it. That was very nice. But I do feel like he earned it, child. This was one time you could have let Kenya be Kenya. Because I feel like Ralph earned every bit of that. But I'm happy that you are showing a more pleasant side of yourself this season. So then he going to say, well, I really appreciate it. But, uh, you know, I just feel like I'm misunderstood. No, sir. We did not misunderstand you treating your wife like dirt for the world to see. That is who you are. Okay, so cut it out. So then Todd is like, okay, let's go. So he takes the guys and he leaves. And everyone else is clearing the air, right? So Drew is like, Sheree, we're good, right? And Sheree said, yeah, we're good. Here comes Sonya. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you, Drew, for a while, and I have never gotten a chance to talk to you, so I just feel like I'm going to do it here. Drew was like, I don't understand. She's like, oh, okay, well, I'm about to make you understand. Sonia, you could have easily talked to Drew earlier. You are looking for a moment, and you are looking for an audience. Okay, so cut the crap. I'm all for people being corrected when they're wrong, but it feels as though they choose Drew because she's an easy target. Sonya, everything was fine about a week ago when she had to pick you up when you got sideswiped, but now all of a sudden you got this huge problem with her that just can't wait. Come on now, Sonya, that ain't making no sense, child. She's like, okay, well, let me give you a few examples. You've been in constant conflict, okay? Also, you put your hands in Sheree's face, okay? And what else is going on? Girl, and? So Drew was like, girl, I have been seeing you. You were just with me. You could have said something. So Sonya was like in her confessional, Drew had 85 people in her room the other day. I don't know if she's competing with Beyonce. Girl, she ain't competing with Beyonce because Beyonce like her privacy. Okay, shout out to the Virgos. Child, we do not be wanting everybody and anybody all up in our business. But I understand what you're trying to say. And um, you could have said something to her, just like she said. There are people here and there were people there. Even though all the ladies are here, they do it every season. You could have pulled Drew to the side and had a conversation. You wanted to embarrass her, and as I stated, you were looking for a moment. Moving forward. So Drew said, girl, you could have told me this. Like, I picked you up. I know that's right. I'm going to have to agree with Drew on this one. You and this imaginary problem all of a sudden, yeah, it's giving manufactured mess. That's what it's giving me. So then Marlo was like, well, girl, Kenya got a problem with you too. Because she tried to join dropping it with Drew, her and Sheree. Now, mind y'all, last episode, Sheree said that Drew was ditzy. Now, my grandma called it dizzy. She's always like, oh, she dizzy. Drew, you're giving very much dizzy. Girl, now, you know these heifers did not try to join no drop it with Drew. She told me, oh, my God, what? <laughs> Thank you. Girl gone. Drew knows she can give clueless. Do you hear me? So then Marlo was like, yeah, but girl, the site ain't working. Drew was like, um, yeah, I think it crashed. Here go, Marlo. Oh, so many people. When I tell y'all I fell out of my bed hollering, I was hollering so loud on that because it was the facial expressions. It was everything. Child, I hollered. Drew needs some backup, honey, because these helpers like to play in her face. So she's trying to pull up the site, child, with this error message showing. But all the ladies are like, we don't even know what this is. So they're all trying to get to the bottom of it, honey. Drew hit him with a one time at band camp. Drew. You don't know what it is because y'all made it up, honey. You didn't came up with a catchy name and you ran with it. So Marla was like, she knows that's a Facebook group. It definitely is giving Facebook group realness. I ain't gonna lie to you. So Sheree said, why did you start that group with people losing weight and you got lipo? So Drew said that she had a hernia and she had it repaired. Now, I don't have anything to say about that because to each its own. If you want to repair something on your body, then go ahead and repair something on your body. But I will say this. That's why I didn't used to believe them girls all over Instagram talking about try this flat tummy T. Shout out to flat tummy T because they had BBL written all over their face. They didn't have to say a word. But you want me, okay, regular schmegler at home, going to work every day, bags up under my eyes because I ain't slept all day and all night to go get this flat tummy T knowing it's not going to flatten me. So therefore, in thus and such, no. Child, I ain't believe none of them women used to be selling them waist trainers and all that. Now, mind you, I do love a good waist trainer. But they sell a dream to you as though this workout system is what caused these results. And it's not the truth. So just then, Sheree gets a FaceTime call from Tyrone, honey, his farewell phone call. And they're talking to him. And Drew is in the back trying to talk to Sonya. And that's that on that. 
In the next scene, Sheree is on her way to see Tyrone. So she's sitting in the car, right? Calling, 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 no answer. You have reached the Sprint PCS voice mailbox of 555-C-O-N-A-R-T-I-S-T. It's giving 555 con artist. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this man right here. So she calling him, y'all, and he not answering. So then Sheree makes it to Philly at 1.30 p.m. Right, she gets a table on the outside looking in. Honey, it's cold. She sit underneath the heat lamp, steady calling. So he has this woman sitting outside in her chinchilla in her cute boots, waiting on him, ordering hot tea, honey, rubbing sticks together, putting her Girl Scout badge to use to build a fire, all to wait on him. So she's like, dang, everybody's coming but Tyrone. He's typically on time. Girl, on time to lie. So it's 30 minutes later. Everybody and their mama is passing by. She calls Tierra, which is her oldest daughter, to try to figure out what it means when it rings and then the phone gets busy. Honey, it means you've been blocked. Either that or he has the phone on do not disturb. And how did he get enough money to get an iPhone anyway? So it's going on an hour and 30 minutes and the production comes up and they're like, yeah, his attorney said he can't come because of a parole violation. That's cap. Because if you ask for permission and it's within whatever range they told you, how are you getting a violation if you never even started moving towards the direction? It's giving lie. Child, please. So Sheree is like, well, he could have told me before I got here. Sheree, Tyrone is a lying piece of sh Okay. He got his lawyers lying too. That's what they do. So then she calls Kenya to vent and she starts crying. Oh, Sheree. You need to move on from this, honey. You're you. You need to get some counseling because I don't think you ever really got over whatever happened to you with Bob. You know, your picker is off. I know that about me. I know my picker is off, honey. I got to work on it. So that's why I'm not in a relationship. You got to work on you first. And quiet as this kept, honey, you got to be an example to your daughters. You're 50 plus years old. Sitting up here playing like this at your big grown age. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to get this together. And Sheree was like, you know, we always go to restaurants. He know damn well that he's with somebody else. So he took the cowardly way out and he ain't fooling me. But y'all know what? I do appreciate how sincere and sweet Kenya was and how she was there for her. She wasn't shady. She wasn't, you know, snappy. You know how Kenya like to do. She was really just sincerely there for Sheree. She was like, how can I help you? Like, do you want me to get you a plane ticket? Like, what do you need from me? That was such a beautiful moment considering how the two of them started. Kenya is really showing out. I love to see it. Because you know, Sheree has not really had an ally on this show. I mean, she was hanging on out over there with uh, Kim Zosiak Beerman, but we saw how that panned out. But I like the fact that her and Kenya are really forming a friendship. And I hope it lasts throughout the season because you know how these helpers get together and the next thing you know, they're mad. It really was a sad moment to witness, but Sheree, you cannot put your life on hold any longer for this man. And she said she wasn't going to talk to him no more, child. Oh, honey, this was a fool. And that was the end of the episode. Child, y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I thought it was cute. I thought it was, it had some comical moments. You know, they was just sitting around, not really doing much. But we'll see how it goes once they get back to the A. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always... Stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.